In this video, we're going to have a brief look at Power BI, a Microsoft reporting package that you can use mostly for free. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of IDoData.com. So Microsoft Power BI comes in two different forms. First of all, there is the desktop version, which you can download onto your Windows computer. And then there is the Power BI service, which is an online version with different functionality. Now, the great news about Power BI is that it is mostly free. So the desktop version is completely free. So if you want to download something just to use on your Windows computer, you can do that. The Power BI service is also free right up to the point when you want to share something with somebody else. Then you have to upgrade to either the Power BI Pro at about $10 per user per month, or Power BI Premium, which is about double that. You can also get a company-wide version as well. So to try it for free, then go to the Power BI website, powerbi.microsoft.com, and click Start Free, and then scroll down for Power BI Download for Free. So you get to this once you've installed it. This is the what do you want to do. Do you want to get data? In other words, do you want to load data? Do you want to go to a previous visualization? Or do you want to open up a previous report? So what I'm going to do is ignore all of this, just click on the X, and I'm going to get data here in the home menu. So get data, and if I click on more, you can see the huge array of data sources that you can use for free. So let's start with files. So we've got Excel and text files. Going to databases, and we've got SQL Server databases, Oracle databases, IBM databases, and so on. We've got the Power Platform. So we've got Power BI datasets, data marts, data flows, and the Dataverse. We've got Microsoft Azure, where, for instance, SQL database or the Data Explorer or Blob or Table Storage. We've got other online services and then a few other things. So in this video, I'm going to have a look at an Excel workbook. I'll just click Connect. It's asking me where my data is that I want to load, so I'll click on that. And then it goes, okay, I've got the workbook. Which spreadsheet do you want? And I'm going to download one particular spreadsheet or named region, and that in this case is one called HPI Admins, which is all to do with inflation. Now I can load that or I can click on transform data, which takes me to an extra step, which is the power query or the get and transform window. But we'll be looking at that in a later video. So I'm just going to go close and apply and that will load the data. So the data has been loaded. It's here on the right hand side. And if I want to explore it, then I can go into the data here and have a look at the data. So we've got date, we've got region name, and we've got lots of different ways of expressing prices and change of prices. Now, this is not editable. So you can't go in and say, actually, this is minus 0 0.18. You can't do that. If you want to make changes to the structure, then you can do that with the get and transform data but you can't actually just double click on something and edit it. You can also have multiple tables joined together using relationships here in the model view. So I'm going to go back to the report view and I'm going to create a visualization. And I've got all of these different visualizations here. And if you can't see them, then just click on the chevron at the top. So I'm going to say I'm going to create a bar chart and you can see various types of bar chart. I'm going to have a stacked column chart here. So I will resize it, I can move it about. So I can have multiple visuals here. And I can drag what I want over here. So we have the X axis, we have the Y axis, we have other things. So these keep changing because Microsoft keeps redefining both the Power BI desktop and the Power BI service presentation. So I'm going to put date in the x-axis and you can see it brings in a hierarchy of year, quarter, month and day. 
which I can change if I wish. And then I'm going to put in the sales volume in the Y axis. So here is my data by day. I can say I don't want it by day, I want it by month. And then I can go up into quarters and up into years. I can say, okay, I don't want this visualization. I want to change this or duplicate this. I want a line chart. I want to duplicate this so it is in another page and have the line chart there. Now make sure you select the visualization first, otherwise it will try and create a second one. So let's just click on it and you can see these little markers all the way. So having selected that, I click on the line chart. There is my line chart. Okay, I don't want this axis to go all the way down to 100,000. I want it to start at zero like this bar chart did. Okay, what I need to do, make sure I select the visualization and I go into format. And there's a huge amount of things that I can format. And if I go into the Y axis, I can say, I want the minimum to be zero, for instance. And instantly you can see that the Y axis has changed. Let's say I want multiple lines. So I've got a region name. So I will go back into the build visual and I will put region name in the legend. So now we have got all of these different lines bit too confusing to have them all on the one chart. Well, I will change this so that it is in the small multiples instead. And now I've got a different chart in the same visualization for the different regions. Now let's say I did not want to see all of the data. I wanted to see just a subset of it. Well, I can add a slicer. So this is a filter. So I'm dragging the date into the slicer field. And now if I change the slicer, then we've got changes here. Now, suppose I want a second slicer, I can do that. I will use the region name, so I'm not seeing all of the region names perhaps. So I want to concentrate on Greater Manchester and I hold down the control key, South Yorkshire and West Yorkshire. Or if I have them all in the one chart, what I could also do is just click on one of them to highlight. Now you can also have additional interactions between various visuals. So let's say I put this in the legend. So here I've got everything. I'm going to change this so that it is a bit squashed. Add another visual. So I will add a stacked bar based on the region name and again, the some of the sales volume. And if I click on one particular item, you can see that it filters for that. Or it might be that if I click on a particular segment, that it highlights it. So here you can see West Midlands in 2007 is being highlighted. Now there's a lot more you can do. You can add new measures, new calculations. You can add new columns to your data. You can even expand the visuals that you can see. And you can also insert from Power Automate and Power Apps, as well as using lots of other different types of visuals. So now I've got this, let's save this. I'm going to save this as my YouTube file, and then I'm going to publish it. So I can do this by going to File, Publish, Publish to the Power BI service, and I can put in a destination. So I'll just have it in my default workspace and click Select. And here you can see it is now publishing to the online Power BI service. So in just a few seconds, we've got success. I can click on the link. And after signing again on the Power BI service, it is now available on the web. And as I say, if you want to share it, then you will need a license. You'll need to upgrade to a pro license or a premium capability. So in this video, we've had a quick look at Power BI. So we've seen that we can download the desktop version for free. The actual price of the full version is not that expensive, $10 per user per month. 
but you only need that if you want to collaborate, if you want to share your reports on the Power BI service. Then you can use the Power BI desktop for free. So you could save your files and then send them by email. That's free as well. You can get and transform your data. You can view your data. You can join your data. You can create visualizations and then you can publish it to the Power BI service. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not click on the like and why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching and keep learning.